Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, I'm going to speak about NDTV's acquisition by Adani ji. I will also give you my viewpoint on whether or not you should be buying the NDTV stock right now. And I will generally discuss that what is the issue with business people owning media empires. So let us get the conversation started and let me first and foremost quote the example of Mr. Jeff Bezos. So in 2012, Mr. Jeff Bezos said that, you know what, newspaper business is dead and this business has absolutely zero future. But in 2013, he went and acquired the Washington Post, which is an iconic paper in the US. Now, Mr. Jeff Bezos is not the only business mogul in the US who owns a newspaper. In fact, there are a bunch of other people. For example, there is Mr. Bloomberg, Mr. Rupert Murdoch. There are also people like Mr. Donald Trump who tried to start a TV channel under his name. So to cut the long story short, in the US, this fascination of owning media empires, it has already become really big. And almost every single major empire is owned by some prominent businessmen there. Now you'll say that, okay, hey, what is the problem? It's a newspaper business or it's a media business. What is the problem with business people owning these media empires? Well, the problem is that it leads to creating of echo chambers. Now, what is the meaning of echo chambers? Let me explain it by using a simple example. So in the US, you would have heard that there are kids who take their parents' gun and start killing other people off. Now, it does not take a genius brain to figure out that, hey, something needs to be done on this space. But every time some kind of regulations are brought onto this, the media starts a debate on this. And this is such a nonsensical topic that, hey, that guns need to have proper regulations. People are dying and something needs to be done about it. But the echo chambers are created by the media empires. For example, Fox News in the US, they will say, that gun control should not be there. Then some other news channel will say that, hey, gun control should be there. But you as a normal citizen might already have an inherent opinion on this topic and you will get aligned with one particular news channel. So let's say that you start watching Fox News and then you will keep on agreeing because people will keep on showing you that stuff only that, you know what, that gun control should not be there. It curbs your freedom. So what ends up happening is that you become a part of a particular echo chamber. You can just keep on hearing that commentary only and you stop listening altogether to the other other side of the equation, the news channel that you're watching, it does not even show you the other side. So this is the primary problem that happens. In fact, the Chief Justice of India came out and he gave a speech. He said that, hey, Indian media independence needs to be maintained. Media house with other business interests become vulnerable to external pressure. So you can draw your own inferences, whether business houses owning media houses, is that the right thing? Is that not the right? Now, I'm not here to pass judgments that what Adani ji is doing is right or wrong. A lot of other business people have also done it. So there is no point in me criticizing that move per se, but I will share five quick points with you that will give you better clarity on this topic. And using this, probably, hopefully, you will go on Twitter, you will go on several social media platforms. And accordingly, as per your understanding, you can spread more information. So that is the hope that I have from this video. So point number one is that is Indian media independent? So the short answer, unfortunately, right now is absolutely not. It is not independent. And here are some facts to prove it. So if you go on Google and type out who owns the Indian media, this is the list that you will get. So you can categorically see that Network 18, First Post, CNN TV, Network 18, Network 18. All this is owned by Ammani ji. Then there is uh, Mr. Agrawal who owns the Danik Bhaskar group. There is Raghav Vyal who owns the Quint. Quint has been invested into by Mr. Gautam Adani already. Now he is going and acquiring NDTV also. Now NDTV is not a pure entity that it does not have any business interest or political interest. I am showing you both the sides of the equation. So here is the shareholding pattern of NDTV and you can see that it is controlled by Pranav Roy and Radhika Roy and who is Radhika Roy related to? So she is related to Brinda Karat, who is a political commentator. She is a prominent politician in India and is the sister of Radhika Roy. Now there is another prominent stakeholder in NDTV, which is called as Oswal Green Tech Limited, which owns 14.17% of equity there. Now it's a business house. So of course a business house is already controlling NDTV. So in terms of Adani ji coming in and controlling NDTV, Theoretically, there is no problem per se. But let me paint a larger point and let me go to point two, that what is the impact of these type of moves? So there are three specific negative things that happen when the media becomes biased. Because if a business house is owning a media, it will become biased, whether we like it or not. And all of us are sensible in terms of understanding it. But what is the impact of this? So the first key impact is that negative stories, completely negative stories can be turned into positive. Let me give you two examples. So the first example is from a TV series called as 1992 Scam. 
scam. Now I'm into stock markets. I keep talking about finance, stock markets, careers, all this stuff. So I get to speak with a lot of students. Sometimes I ask them that, hey, who is your ideal investor in the stock market? And I'm surprised to see 15 years old, 16 years old, 20 year old kids who have never even heard of Harshad Mehta. They watched like 1992 scam. Now Harshad Mehta is their idol. Now please read the entire history. Please don't watch simply a TV series and form your opinion on it. The second thing is about the movie Sanju. Now that entire movie was done why? You are smart enough, you tell me in the comment box of why that entire movie was made in the first place. So the point I'm trying to drive home is that hey, media can present a very biased viewpoint, whether it's movies, whether it's news, all this can present a very, very biased picture and it actually creates a massive impact on the society. Now the second key problem that we would have as stock market investor could be understand by understanding more about the business, politics, media, nexus. Now here, let me use the example of Yes Bank. Now Rana Kapoor, who was the promoter of Yes Bank, he worked with DHFL, gave a lot of loans or useless loans to DHFL. DHFL defaulted and at the back end, DHFL invested in Rana Kapoor's daughter's companies. Now this type of mumbo jumbo keeps on happening. Now you tell me if DHFL, hypothetically speaking, has a stake in certain media house, then do you really think that some news will come out against it? And here is the price chart of Yes Bank and it got crushed. Rana Kapoor was able to make his money even during this fall, but you and I as normal stock market investors, what happened if we would have invested in Yes Bank? We would have not gotten the information on time to get out. And when the shit hit the fan, we would have taken massive, massive losses. So this is the problem with the media not being independent, that you get very biased information. And even on occasions, when you get the news, you will get the news very, very late. So these are the two primary problems. Now the third and the major problem is that it kills creative debates. So Karl Marx, who was a philosopher, he gave the concept of base and superstructure. And this is what the diagram looks like. So according to him, what happens in the society is that base is used for means of production. And superstructure is used to indoctrinate people. So what is meant by indoctrination? For example, go to North Korea, please Google after this video, North Korea documentary. What you will end up seeing is that the media, the newsprint, the TV channels, all is focusing on good, good things that Kim Jong-un is doing. He is being portrayed as some kind of a messiah who is taking on big powers like Russia and US and whatnot. And owning media empires is probably the best way of doing it. Think about it this way that the money that NDTV makes or the money any newspaper or media channel will make, the money part is not that great with media channels. And if capitalists are acquiring media channels, why are they doing it? They are doing it simply for political clout. That's it, nothing more. So this brings us to point number three, that how is the current acquisition of NDTV being done by the Adani enterprise? So it is being done in a very murky way, so to say. This is what the information that is coming out. So how it is being done in very simple to understand language. Point number one is there is a company called as VCPL, which is indirectly owned by Adani Enterprises. So that company gave a loan to NDTV in 2009. Why did NDTV take that loan? Because it already had existing loans from ICICI banks and bunch of other banks. So it had to repay those loans. So it was type of a refinancing. So VCPL in return got something called as convertible debentures. Debentures give you the right of converting these bonds into stock at a later stage. So in 2022, VCPL has decided to convert these stocks. So it's not as if that this is a wrong move. VCPL had every right to convert their debenture into stocks and that is what they are doing. Now it might be a war between VPCL which has deep pockets and Pranab Roy Radhika. Now the negative argument that is being thrown against Adani ji is that hey, this is a hostile takeover and this is the statement that has been released by NDTV saying that we were not consulted in terms of converting of these debentures into stocks. This brings us to point number four that hey, what is the specific advantage for Adani ji to buy NDTV so to say or have a major controlling stake in NDTV? Well, there are direct political advantages. I will just stop there and not say anything else because there is a lot of Derka Mahal and a lot of memes are coming up on Ravish Kumar ji and people are also advising him that you should join LinkedIn to find jobs and whatnot. So anyways, I will not get into the politics of things. So you guys can comment below as to what specific is the reason why Adani ji is buying NDTV. I would love to read your commentary. Now let me move on to fifth and final point that hey, is this like a great money making opportunity if we jump into NDTV right now? So let me very quickly talk about the fundamental so if you take a look at the profit growth of the company or sales, it has hardly grown in the last 10 years. Why? Because A, it was a very high debt company to begin with. 
and media empires usually have a very high fixed cost they have to maintain their staff the revenues are not that high it is highly dependent on advertisement spend so it's not a lean model to begin with so as a fundamental investor you should not even be looking at such companies to begin with so this is problem one and even in terms of net profit you can categorically see that it has hardly churned any profit now think about it this way that from a long term perspective youtube is coming up a lot of independent leading journalists from india they have started their youtube channels for example there is shekhar gupta ji who runs the print and he is trying to cultivate that empire there is palki sharma upadhyay ji who runs vaya news and who was also a leading journalist so the point is that a lot of established anchors and journalists they are getting onto youtube and are cultivating their own mini media empires here and it is no surprise that the established media channels are going to lose their viewership to these youtube channels so to cut the long story short if you want to invest in it from a long term perspective kindly do not invest in this stock this has very poor business fundamentals for you to give sustainable returns but what about short term scenario will it go up will it not go up okay it depends on a lot of circumstantial things so first and foremost this stock has given massive up run after 2020 so from 25 rupees it has gone up today as of today to approximately 400 rupees so this is a huge jump in the stock price in a very short span of time so this particular news of adani ji acquiring ndtv this has been known to a lot of people and they have already aggregated this stock now if you are trying to take fresh position in this stock so the first problem that you will face is you see this flat line here it means that this stock is in an upper circuit and there are no sellers of this stock as of now now going forward it is likely that due to news based trading this stock is likely to move up so if you have put in a little bit of money just for speculation it is okay you can take a little bit of position but this is a completely speculative stock if some bad news comes into the mix tomorrow that is that if this deal is falling apart or not going through then this stock will tank quite a lot so whatever money you are putting just put it from a short term perspective put very little money that's it and it will be pure gambling pure speculation i just wanted to put this view point out because i had been getting so many questions i hope you enjoyed the video i will see you soon